does affect things. So who are you? I'm Conrad Feldman. I'm co-founder and CEO of Quantcast. And what is Quantcast for those who don't know? So insider uh, bloggers know. Yeah, yeah, um, you know it, it, I, simply, simply put, we want to make digital audience measurement suck less. Yeah. But the reason for that is as we have a sort of a, a vibrant set of digital audiences, and increasingly it's important for website owners, you know, video producers, bloggers, and marketers to understand those audiences so they yeah. can make decisions about what they should be buying and for what brands. And that's obviously an important part of the ecosystem is how we monetize yeah. those audiences. And measurement's key to that. Uh, absolutely, and uh, most webmasters or, or bloggers or whoever want, you know builds web properties, I see they usually have a bunch of different toolbars or ways to see whether a site's doing well or not. How do you fit into that space? You know, like there's Alexa and Compete right. and you guys. So there's, the interesting thing about digital media is there's sort of two ways to measure it. With traditional media, you're always reliant on a sample. So with broadcast media, you didn't know who was tuning in to your signal. Yeah. So back from the original days of radio, people developed a panel, which was a group of people who recorded the media they consume, literally in diaries. Yeah, I did that one. Wrote, okay. I did that one week because uh, uh, Nielsen sent me a book and paid me a hundred bucks or okay. whatever it was, and I had to keep track of every radio station I listened how to. How long was that? hundred bucks seems like quite a lot compared to how much is often paid for these things. Yeah, so. I, I forget if it was even a hundred, but it was, right. it was some amount of money, right. but so, it wasn't that so, much. So what they know. do is they get a few thousand of those people yeah. and collect the results from all of them and extrapolate up to the population. And that mechanism, first of all, the, oh, with broadcast media, it's the only way you could do it because you don't know who's tuning into the signal. Yeah. But the challenge comes when the media becomes fragmented. You know, when there were three radio stations, ten television stations, panel-based results were quite good. But as the number of media choices increased, uh, and more and more people were able to choose different specialized media choices that interested them, the sampling error from panels became large. To the extent today, many cable television stations have no ratings points. Yeah. When you have no ratings points, there's no currency. It's difficult to attract the big brand advertisers who spend all the money on television. Yeah. Now, move on to the internet. The same techniques have historically been applied. Panel-based samples. And the challenge is the internet is tremendously more fragmented in terms of the number of media choices, but also where we can choose to consume. Someone's video could be distributed across a number of different sites. Yeah. So fragmentation and syndication have really pushed the panel to breaking point. And of course, the big difference about the internet is it's not broadcast. Yeah. Information is delivered individually to the devices that we consume the media on. And that very process of delivery creates a record of the fact it was delivered. And that's the, that was the starting point for all the tension in the industry between the panel-based measurement services and webmasters' own logs. Now, logs don't necessarily capture people. There's robots, there's cookie deletion, and those sorts of things. But the fact is, it is possible to conduct a census. So the approach that we've taken is to combine some of the traditional sample-based approaches. That's yep. how we're able to provide estimates, rough estimates, for sites that don't use our direct measurement technology. What we offer is a free direct measurement solution. It's a measurement tag that goes onto the website, and we have a flash-based solution for video. And it collects data in much the same way as a Google Analytics or an Omnichor. The big difference is, rather than focusing on sort of what people are doing on the website, as web analytics packages do, what we do is use all that data to build models of who the audience is. Yeah. Demographics, geographically where they're located, also the types of businesses that people work in. That's the sort of information that if you're looking to attract advertisers is important, and also help you make decisions about what content would be most appropriate for your audience. Yeah, no, it's, it's key. Uh, and I know going around, because I used to use a tool that showed me all the analytics uh, right. bugs that are on each right. page. I forget what the tool's called now, and somebody's going to yell at me <laughs> over this video. Uh, but I saw it at the eMetrics conference last year, and you could go to a page like TechCrunch and see you know, that yep. he's using Google Analytics, and he might have Quadcast on there, he might have some other ones on there as That's well. That's right, all well, these different tools serve different purposes. Yeah. Um, how is measurement changing? Because I'll throw something out there. I, I just heard the CBC radio station, uh, the C Canadian public radio station, mm -hmm. talk last week. And they said, we don't think of ourselves as a website anymore. We don't think of ourselves as a radio station anymore. We're putting content out there, and we want the, our fans to 
view that content wherever they are. If that's on YouTube, that's fine. You know, and if it's over on Facebook, that's fine too. Or if it's on Twitter, that's fine too. Yep. And so the our usage pattern is spreading out and changing from where it used to be when we all have just websites, right? Uh, absolutely. I think you see that a lot of video online, where many people use distribution partners. Yep. You know, CBS or Hulu is a good example. Hulu has a tremendous amount of traffic to their own website, but they also make their content available through other websites. You know, you can watch a Hulu video on MySpace or on Comcast Fancast. And if you are the content owner, it's important to understand all of that audience. And of course, as you look to offer audience packages up to marketers, you need to understand how they differ in different locations. You know, the characteristics of a person watching a video in one location could be quite different from another location based upon you know, the type of audience that that location attracts. Yeah. How, how does Quantcast help us and how is, how is Quantcast changing in response to this new usage pattern where we're well, viewing more and more data on friend feed and Twitter and Facebook and... Yeah, there's, ultimately it depends upon the ability to utilize a measurement tag in that content. So uh, it, it, it differs in terms of, of platforms. Certain things are harder to measure than others. But for things like widgets and videos, yeah. the actual widget itself can contain a measurement tag, which means we collect a record of the content consumption wherever it is and can aggregate it together. So you can actually look at the, if you have a, a large network of, of distribution partners, you can actually look at the unduplicated characteristics of that entire audience or break it down by a particular distribution channel. Yeah. One, one thing I see on, uh, when, whenever people talk about Quantcast and, and, the, uh, and your competitors is they say Quantcast is much better at doing global uh, measurement where like Compete only seems to do really well in the United so, States. Well, I'm not a, sure if that's true or there's, not. Well, there's, a, there's, a, there's an important difference. So... Okay. The vast majority of the data we collect comes from our measurement tags. So we collect billions of records of media consumption every day from across millions of separate websites, blogs, videos, widgets, and so on. Um, when you rely upon a sample, you're limited in terms of the distribution of that sample. So if your panel exists just in the US, you're only going to measure the US. When someone uses one of our measurement tags, then wherever the user is that's consuming the media, we're able to measure them. And because the vast majority of our data comes from those measurement tags, and you know, more than 99% of all the data we collect comes from those tags, we're able to see media consumption for, for websites that are in our quantified publisher program, wherever that media consumption occurs, any, anywhere around the world. Interesting. Uh, somebody I, I just asked on Twitter an hour ago I saw. <laughs> what I should ask you, and one yeah. of the questions was, are you coming out with an API? And I'm trying to wonder why somebody would want an API to talk to a measurement service, but maybe to build a Zeitgeist kind of page or yeah, something Yeah, I think like there's, that. you know, certainly we would like to continue to release tools that enable people to get more access to our data. And for the publishers that we work with to be able to get their data as, as well distributed in the public domain as they would like. We also have to, you know, we're, we're relied upon by many media buyers, agencies and marketers, and they have to have trust in our data. So we also need to make sure that when someone's viewing data that's reportedly from Quantcast, that it, that it really is. But we're looking to, to release a number of additional tools that will enable people. One of the questions was, can we put together lists? We'd love to enable a feature that would enable people to put together lists and keep track of a set of different websites that they're interested in. Yeah. We, also, we also make our top million list available for download. I saw on, that. On our website. So anyone, anyone can download that and get basic data for the top million domains. Yeah, I think... Uh, Craigslist is like 13th largest website, and it's Facebook's big site, on yeah. there, and yeah, MySpace yeah. on there, so you can always watch uh, who's beating who Absolutely. At, at, at the Absolutely. moment. What, for, when I go around the world and talk to small business people who are trying to build websites and, uh, for their rest, mm -hmm. you know, restaurants or bars or even like MoMA, yep. right? MoMA is right down the street from you, the Modern Art Museum here yep. in San Francisco. They probably don't have a huge web team. <laughs> they probably have right. one or two guys yeah. who are trying to or girls who are trying to put together a website, what kind of mistakes do they make when they're measuring? And what, what do you think is a best practice, I well, guess? I think take advantage of the, of the tools that exist today. I mean, you can sign up for, if you want to understand how people are using your website, and which paths they're navigating through, you can sign up for free for Google Analytics. If you want to understand who the audience is that's visiting your site, you can sign up for free for Quantcast. And it's a very easy implementation process. It's a simple piece of HTML that fits on the bottom of the page. And one of the key advantages our approach offers is even small websites can get information about their audience. When people are reliant upon panels, the website has to be of a certain size before there's even any rough estimates available. Um, you know, we can, and when I say a certain size, often that's hundreds of thousands of people a month. Yeah. 
we're able to provide you get an example of a bar. I know there's a local bar here that uses us on their website, and they have, I think, something like 1,200, 1,300 people a month visit the site. But we have rich profiles of that audience's demographics, and you know the, the geographical skews in the audience, and even the types of businesses that people work in. Interesting. Can you know, do you know of those 1,200 people where else they go on the web so you know where to advertise to similar people? Or? So certainly one of the services we offer for media buyers is the ability to search for certain audiences. So if I'm a marketer and I'm interested in finding a particular audience, I'm, I'm you know, in consumer packaged goods and I want to reach women 18 to 49, we provide a media planner tool for planners to be able to go in and say, hey, I'm looking for this sort of audience. Where are the places on the web where I can best find them? And we'll break that down by individual sites, but also we allow the publishers we work with, many of the publishers we work with are, are big media companies. Yeah. They have a huge audience and it's well organized according to, to how they deliver content and the needs of their marketers. We actually enable them to segment that audience into different, you know, maybe they have a sports section or they organize into their finance vertical. Yeah. Using, our, using our tags, they can actually define these audiences separately. And when those particular vertical or segments match well against the marketer's target, we can highlight that for that marketer. Yeah. Are you seeing any unusual trends this year, particularly with the economy? Are you seeing any trends that would, you know, be newsworthy or be interesting that you, well, you guys, when, when you get, you know, uh, you know I think one that's <laughs> over one, dinner or whatever. One, that, one that's obviously interesting is the continuing growth of, of online video, yeah. and especially the move from the content owners to move more and more of their sort of television type programming onto the internet. And I think that's an interesting sort of precursor for where advertising dollars go. There's $75 billion a year spent on television today. And as more and more of that video content comes online, that's going to be a very interesting forum for advertisers to explore how they shift some of those dollars online. They would like to. You know, we spend a lot of time on the internet. Uh, you know, it's comparable to watching television. But television still captures the the vast majority of those sort of branding ad dollars. We've always been arguing at conferences about when that money is going to move over. Do you have any sense of it? it I, you know, it will, it will, I think it will, okay. it will move over when it is easy yeah. for the agencies and the marketers to spend their money online. You know, one, of the, one of the attractions of the internet is the fragmentation. The fact that you and I can choose whatever content interests us. And as, as the whole internet population, we organize ourselves into these nice homogeneous groups, niches. Yeah. That's a great sort of uh, opportunity for marketers because you get higher composition of your target. But traditionally, the measurement approaches that have been used by buyers to find properties don't deal well with that fragmentation. And that's why we've been getting such great adoption from the, the agencies in terms of using the platform because they can actually start to understand these different audience fragments and put them together. You know, it's great to have a high composition audience. You've got to get enough reach as well. And television is still relatively easy to buy compared to the internet. And you know, part of what we're doing and what a number of people are doing is trying to make digital media audiences as easy to buy as television. And that's, that will help shift those dollars. Interesting. Any surprises since you started this company? I mean, uh, you know, that you're seeing things that we are, we didn't even talk about mobile and how that's right. changing. Uh, yeah, mobile's certainly taking off. I think mobile, you know, it's interesting. When we first started thinking about mobile, there's all these different platforms. Yeah. And of course, what you're seeing increasingly is that mobile will look a lot like the rest of the internet. You know, all our platforms will probably run Flash. They'll run JavaScript, and they'll look they'll look a lot like uh, you know the. Internet well, except for the iPhone. With the, with the, with the, right. the iPhone won't do Flash. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> they, they, they may they may get there. Apparently, there's, there's something in the works. Apparently, <laughs> that's what everybody keeps thinking. But uh, Apple keeps dragging its feet. You know, I I keep hearing rumors they have it working, and Apple doesn't want to put it on the phone. So right, there's a few other devices. Coming with Flash soon. Right? Absolutely, that'll, that'll Palm. Be, and right. Palm's new Pre and uh, the new Nokia has Flash. Right. So there's plenty. Going to be plenty of phones out there that do have Flash, but one one right. big platform is out there not with Flash. So yeah, we certainly. I mean, obviously, it's been a tremendous growth in in mobile usage, yeah. and it's it's one of the it's one of the things we measure. We don't do a great job job for the for the publishers who work with it breaking it out yet, but uh, certainly there's something on the roadmap. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Just this weekend, we were looking at. Um, Twitter follower numbers because they they changed how uh, they recommend a certain set of followers and they get and those set the set of followers are getting massive numbers of new followers. But when you look at the followers, they all, almost always have just one uh, one post. Twenty people they're following. They look very uh, almost like a, a 
there's no engagement. There's no right. participation. There's no picture there. There's nothing. And that, my theory, and mm -hmm. this might be proven out over the next couple of years, is advertisers don't want, won't value those kinds of non-participants as much as somebody who actually participates and is engaged and active. How are you guys going to measure, you know, engagement and me and activity and time spent on websites, I guess. So especially we, we, in the we, measure, we measure a lot of those things, but the metric that's appropriate will differ based on the advertiser. At the end of the day, advertisers really care about sales. Yeah. Is my advertising exposure resulting in greater sales? And I think over time, you'll see a lot of work being done in the industry to make advertising more accountable. You know, one of the reasons that search has been so successful is because the targeting is straightforward, it captures the intent the individual has, and it's easy to measure in terms of the clicks, which is, what, which is what people pay for. And that's meant it's been very easy for people to spend money on it. But of course, a lot of advertising, the advertising that we see every day in print or on television, most of that advertising isn't designed to get someone to stop consuming the media and go away and purchase something. Rather, it's designed to influence their perceptions and attitudes towards a product such that at some point in the future, they will buy that product. And there are ways of, of measuring attitudinal studies, people's perception of the product, but I think longer term, there'll be better connections between media exposure and ultimate sales. And that's, that's what will really drive behaviors. If there's a certain set of people on Twitter that prove to be really influential in generating sales for a particular marketer, that marketer will be, be more than happy to pay to reach those people. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know from the other experiences that people who participate buy more than people who are, you know, not, are just lurking. Right. right? Because the fact that you're engaged, that you're actually taking action, pushes you toward that sales pro down the, the funnel. To, right, to the well there's also process. the really interesting factor in social media is it's not just about you as a purchaser, yeah. it's about you as an influencer that's to true. other people. And even though you may not purchase, if you influence a number of people to purchase, that's really valuable for the market to understand as well. Yeah. And of course we're just getting started in terms of the use of social media for, for influencing perceptions. Yeah. Know, towards products and services. Are you are you uh, building new systems to study? You know, the Facebook's uh, social yeah, we're graph. Always, and stuff we're always like building. That. We're always building new things. We have a. The, we we can be integrated into Facebook easily. There's a Facebook markup language include for for Quantcast. It's yeah. available on their documentation pages. And we're always looking at the ways in which we can better measure audiences to satisfy you know the marketers and publishers that we work with. Yeah. If you were out there as a content pr professional, what would you be starting the, today? Oh, yeah, <laughs> would it be? A <laughs> I, I, that's that's not something I could decide. On. If you do that, well, you should you should it. decide it with your data, right? right. right. <laughs> you should look at what's hot and say so, that's going to be what I'm going to do content on. Right? We 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 tend to think more holistically about how we can make the data useful yeah. for all the people that we work with because there's always different things that be relevant to any particular decision maker. So if we can provide uh, a platform that provides insight and detailed data for all of those participants, we figured they'll be in the best position to leverage it and get value from it. Very cool. I'm gonna turn off the camera now okay. and uh, get you to do a little demo sure. or a couple tips and show me some uh, thing, things to maybe think about when I'm looking at a Quantcast okay. chart because Great. Um, some, there's always a little hidden thing there that right. is always fun to learn from what you guys are doing. So, okay. Uh, we'll be right back, thanks.